Hi everyone, today I'm going to be doing this lovely little picture from um, Miniature Secret Garden by Johanna Basford. It's on the opposite side of this wishing well picture and it's just a little bit of the floral detail from that one. We're going to have a go at, at doing it. Um, oh, I'm just trying to press the book down. It, it does tend to uh, curl up a bit because it's new. It doesn't want to stay open at the spine. I am putting quite a bit of pressure on to close it because <laughs> Um, I know that the string binding is really good but you'll need to check on your book before you do that to make sure that uh, it can take it. Now with these leaves I'm going to do those first. I'm going to start with 52 which is one of my favourite greens from the Ergosoft set and what I'm going to do is start at the bottom with the 52 um, and then leave a gap at the top for um, another colour. So. I'm going to, what I'm doing is I'm putting hard pressure down here at the bottom and a few more layers of colour and then fading off towards the tip of the leaf. And I'm uh, going to do that with all of these lovely little leaves. And now, when I do a little floral piece like this, I have to make a decision. Am I going to um, make all the flowers different colours? Or am I going to sort of stick to some sort of colour scheme, say have them all oranges or pinks or blues or whatever? Or, um, you know, what am I going to do? Now, it sort of depends on my mood in a way and also my pencils. Now, with the Ergosoft, if you want to use purple, there's only two. But if you want to use oranges, there's about five different shades and the same with blues and there's a lots of pinks as well so it depends on what colour you know you couldn't do lots of purples and make them all look different you might want to make them all look really similar anyway so uh, it's just about thinking about what you want to do now I'm doing I've chosen to do all these leaves the same now you can see there are two types of leaf that Johanna's drawn one of them is plain like this one I'm doing here and this one here and then these have got stripes on one side so you could choose to do the two designs of leaves in slightly different colours um, you could choose to do the two halves of each leaf in a different colour as well but I've taken lately to just colouring over the top of some of Johanna's fine detail particularly in this small book but there just isn't the space necessarily to do it also takes longer um, to do as well you know if you did each of these stripes a different colour take a long time it, uh, and also in nature we don't really have a, that sort of effect on many leaves not ones that I see anyway so there's that as well so I just uh, and just go over the top but obviously you can decide what works well for you now another thing I noticed with this picture we've got lots of dots can you see them here there are lots of dots and around here now there's a decision there to be thinking about what to do with those little dots as well so now I'm using the number um, let me see number 50 it's very faint because it's white but, and I'm going to do the ends of the leaves. I'm going to go back over the top of the dark part and then take it to the end of the leaf. I'm going to press quite hard with that. I want a nice solid looking leaf here. I don't want to fade it off towards the end. So I'm just going right over it with quite a hard layer. Now what you could do again after this is to go over the dark part again and that would darken up the bottom and make more of a contrast between these two colours. Um, I'm not going to do that today, I'm just going to leave it quite simple. I think it's less daunting if we've got a little bit less to do. Now particularly um, you might want to go over again if you've got quite a light touch. I press too hard so uh, I've got quite a lot of colour down already. Um, some people I know um, press lighter. I think I used to be very light handed when I first started colouring back in 2013 I think and now I've developed those muscles I don't get hand aching in my hands so much when I press harder so uh, I do have to be careful though I don't always want to be pressing really hard. 
Now you see we've got this little tendril here and these stems. Now, these are very fine. Um, I'm going to do them in the darker green colour I think rather than this lighter colour. I think it will stand out more because it's they're quite fine. I think a lighter colour might just look like I haven't coloured them. And I've got a bit of a problem of trying to stay in the line with these. Now if you've got a lot of different coloured um, fine liner gel pens, um, fine liners or gel pens, sorry, they're not the same thing, um, you could probably do that work, fine work with those and stay in the lines. Unfortunately I've only got I think I've got 15 shades of fine liners and none of them are a nice pale green. They're some of them are a bit dark and harsh and not what I'm looking for for this picture. So I'm not going to do that myself. So there we go, and we've got all the leaves. Now another thing you could do is in between each leaf where they overlap here, you could put a bit of shadow in to give some texture to the picture. But that's uh, that's quite fine work as well which I'm not going to do on this detail if it was a I'm going to do all the stems in this one shade of green which is I didn't tell you is the 52 which we were using before um, yes if it was a bigger picture on the bigger version of this or on the artist's edition which is a lovely book really big versions um, I would probably um, do some shading in there but on this little version it's nice to just keep it simple okay and I'm going to do these little flicks in this green as well and now we've got other leaves so I'm going to stick to these greens because what I'm going I've decided to do is to go for a, a range of colors on the flowers so I think if we've got some consistency in the leaf colour, it'll just bring it all together nicely. So I'm doing exactly what I did with the other leaves, using a slightly different colouring technique, to bring through some dark in the, in the edges. Sorry, on the sort of, on the bits near the stem and then leave the end where I'm going to cover it over with the lighter colour. I find these two shades blend together particularly well. I used to, when I first started colouring, this is the only set I had. So now I'm going in with the uh, number 50. And uh, the these two greens were the first ones I sort of learnt worked really well together. So it's a sort of combination that I really favour because these are in the 24 set which was my first set of uh, my own first set of colouring pencils with the 24 set of Ergosoft. I think I don't even know if I've got any of these left now. I think I might have given them to the children to put in their school bag and got myself a nice new set. There we go. I think that's all the green. What I am going to do is do these little dots in this lighter colour. And these dots here. My pencil's barely sharp enough to cope with it, but there we go. <laughs> right. Now, these ones I'm going to do first. Now, I always like these types of flowers in blue, and I can't tell you why. I just think it works very well for me anyway. So I'm going to go in with number 63. Now, what I'm not going to do is do the center a different color to the rest because it's very fine. It's hard enough to try and stay in the lines anyway. So I'm just going to do them all in the same blue color. I've always thought they look, these little flowers look like forget-me-nots, but obviously the stem part doesn't. Uh, I'm not really sure whether Johanna had a particular flower in mind when she designed these but I always enjoy colouring them in. I'm not sure I like the simplicity of them and because they're small you can't do much just simple colouring. Sometimes it's lovely to just colour in the lines and not worry about shading and blending and 
all those things. So I'm just going to do all of these the same. Now I'm having a think in my head while I'm doing this about these little dots and circles that are around this, these flowers and what I think I'm going to do is fill in the circles with this blue that, that we're using now and then do a little blur of lighter colour blue around the flowers. I'll show you. So I'm going to go in each of these with a little bit of blue. Gosh, I'm not going to be able to stay in the circles very well. It doesn't matter. Just stay as much as I can stay laid back about getting my pencil out of the line. I find watercolour and the splodgy nature of that does I can't get so relaxed about it. I do worry about that a little bit. Now we're going to go in with number 30 and we're going to do just a very light shading all around this. You notice that I've got my pencil on its side because I don't want the sharp point poking into the page and applying a lot of colour. But I'm just going to go around. I'm going right over the top of the blue bits that I've coloured already. That doesn't worry me. But I'm trying to avoid that little green bit because I don't want the uh, blue. See, this would look lovely in a watercolour pencil and then splodged over with some water. but. I just, I've had a go at some watercolour, it's just not, I'm not well practised enough to uh, feel confident in using those yet, watercolour pencils that is. My husband's got a gorgeous set and I have played around with them, maybe in the future. There we go, that's all I wanted, just that little delicate background and we're going to do a similar thing down here with these so I'll show you going to start with this um, number 61 um, and I'm not going to apply it too dark I want it to be fairly delicate still it's this is a very bright color so as you can see I'm just going in with a really light touch so a little bit darker towards the top and then really ease off towards the ends so it's really gentle And the same on this one. So I am trying to take the colour all the way down to the bottom but if I miss a little bit it doesn't really matter. It is, we do want this sort of fading effect that's not really dark enough at the top. There we go. So you see I'm just doing this following this stripe of the flower. Now some people would fill in these bits. For me it looks like it's a tendril that's coming out and just twisting around so it isn't actually a seed. You can do it however you wish though. And then I'm going to take my light pink, which I'm trying to identify, which is number 20. And we're going to do a light again on the side, just a light layer all around. And I'm not going to go over the top of these too much. I'm not going to panic if I do because we want that light colour at the base but we're just going to surround it by a little bit of pink colour. You could use a pastel for this as well but I find it a little bit easier to get into these little gaps with a pencil. Um, we could use a pastel pencil. I've, not, I've got a few of those but I haven't really played with them much. My um, local art shop was sadly closing down and I bought a few little odd bits and pieces from there and including a few pastel pencils. There we go. I think that'll do. And then we've got these other three. Now what colours are missing is what I then say to myself, we've got no yellow, we've got no orange, we've got no purple. But I think because we've got blue and pink, that's quite purpley enough. I think I'm going to do all these three in shades of orange. So we're going to start with this number 42 and I'm just going to do the whole of this top one in this colour in an even tone and then I will put some darker tone in it. I'm going to do the centres in yellow of all of the flowers in the same shade of yellow. Right, so that's 
that one. In fact, I'm going to do the same on all of these. Keep some consistency in them, even though this one is a completely different shape. That's okay. They won't look identical once I've finished. It just gives us something to start working with while I think about how I'm going to develop that. And now I'm going to go up to my next shade of orange, which is number four. And for this one, I'm going to be do orange on the tip of the petal. So you can see I'm gently pushing some colour there on the end and then just dragging it a little bit towards the middle. I can do the same on each one so you can see. So take the tip of the pencil and then push it in towards the centre. And if you try to release the pressure on the pencil as you push towards the middle, you'll get a lighter mark and it will blend in with the colour beneath. way around hopefully you can see there we go and I'm just going to make sure they're sort of blended in a little bit now this one I'm going to do the opposite just so it's different so I'm going to start in the middle and push that colour out to the end but not all the way Can see although we're doing it differently because we've got some consistency with the shades it ties them together now this one I'm going to do this dark orange on these here and we're going to take a slightly darker shade of orange to finish this one off this is the number 24 and I'm just going to go into each tip a little bit of that one. So you can see again I'm just pulling the colour from the corner towards the centre. We're just going to ignore that one that's under the leaf. There we go. And then we're going to go in the centres. Now I do like doing different colours and shades within the centre of a flower. These are very small. I'm just going to go in with number 11 and just do a, a um, one layer of 11. You see, I'm going over it a few times because I want it to stand out. There we go. There we go. And there we're done. Let me just uh, straighten it up a little bit for you. There we go. So that one's finished. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you have a go at it and, and I hope you enjoy it. So uh, happy colouring.